Hi everyone and welcome. We're in my wormery and I'm prepared to feed my worms. Uh, today I've got a little bit of coffee in here, used coffee grounds, and uh, I actually just went straight into my freezer and I grabbed the entire supply of frozen kitchen scraps that are accumulating. And uh, we're not going to use this much today. We've only got one bin to feed. And that's the one that's right down there in the middle on the bottom shelf. Now that bin has been in service for 20 days now. And I just compiled a few little numbers here just to illustrate where we stand with this bin. Um, originally, 20 days ago, we had launched it and loaded the in initial batch of worms into the bin. Um, seven days later, I came back and added even more worms. So that was about a thousand worms in each case. And then um, on day 10, the bin received its first feeding. And then I came back a third time to add more worms on day 12. So this bin has been loaded with something in the neighborhood of, it's hard to say, maybe 2,500, 3,000 worms, and it's not a very large bin. So we're back here today because we've created a, an environment with a lot of hungry mouths to feed. And other than the food that was built into the bin originally prior to it being launched, this bin has only received one feeding and after 10 more days um, with that many you know hungry worms eating I'm, a, I'm assuming that we're going to be in need for a little bit more food on that bit in that bin so let's get that thing out here on the bench and see how things are progressing and give it some of this food now considering that this is just the bins second feeding um, usually a bin that's still this young does not have a lot of weight to it but this bin definitely has some nice weight to it adding you know that many worms amounts to in itself at least a few pounds worth of weight and i'm just trying to remember now if uh if in general the bin was just built bigger or more spacious um i don't think it was i believe it was just a typical fairly shallow bin when i first built it and um this is the uh, this is that piece of plastic that we added shortly after building the bin within a couple days to try to help keep the moisture down within the bin, um, and it's really doing wonders here. I've I've always got to kind of be prepared for slight differences in what I'm used to seeing <laughs> because um, like for example what we're seeing here is something I normally don't see. Usually the piece of paper that I use to cover. The worms just stays there because it uh, it might sop up a little bit of moisture, but then it'll immediately evaporate, usually leaving the top side of the paper fairly dry. But in this case, with that plastic there, um, this paper was able to stay completely soaked <laughs> the entire time, and as a result, the worms just took advantage of that and chewed it up. Or maybe they didn't eat it up mainly because it was a food item, perhaps it was only because it was in the way so, so that they can get to the top of it or get through it to where all the moisture was collecting with the plastic bag that was over here. So now, here we've got some other paper, and frankly I don't remember <laughs> what this stuff was here for. It doesn't look like the same type of paper as the newspaper, It's, I believe it's just that single sheet of paper that's very similar to like a paper bag. I think it came as packaging as sort of a protective material thrown inside the package. So whatever, um, I think the majority of this paper that we're finding here, scraps of what used to be the coverings are just gonna kinda end up becoming bedding when we drop our food in there. So we'll just put them aside and we'll use them as sort of a foundation to put the, the food in. Uh, another thing that I'm not really accustomed to having is this many castings scattered across the top as well. But with the moisture coming down right there at the surface, the worms are hanging out there, coming up, all of them are coming up here for a drink, and as a result they're just uh, covering this feeding area with castings. So it's really nice to see 
So I'm really glad I adopted this um, this new plastic sheet covering approach because it's really doing a nice job. The worms really appreciate the the moist conditions it creates. I appreciate not having to supplement the lost moisture that gets lost to evaporation. Now we're starting to make our way down into the uh, into the feeding that was administered into here 10 days ago. It's first feeding, the bin's first feeding. I know because I'm starting to encounter some of the chunks of food that were placed in here previously. This is a piece of that bread with mold throughout it. I'm finding a couple chunks of that here. Some leftovers of the bread that they've not quite yet finished off. And I've got a funny feeling that what they're really after is the the mold and the fungus that grows on that. They're not so much in interested in the bread itself, but they're probably more interested in the um, in the microorganisms that inhabit the bread. So I'm finding a whole bunch of that bread down here. I don't remember how much I added. Um, it must have been a pretty good amount because there's a whole bunch of it. But right alongside of it, there's worms as well. So they're obviously starting into it. They're down here through the middle when you crack it open. So the bread might not be here for much longer. They probably just, you know, needed a little bit of time to get off to a good start. So I think we've picked out all of the bread. And that's one thing you'll realize is that some foods require more time than others. And maybe bread's just one of those foods, you know. I've, I've experienced that in the past with a variety of different types of foods. I fed apples not long ago and the apples were just there weeks and weeks uh, later. Breaking down but slowly. This I believe is a potato, half of a potato. So that's a pretty good sized piece of leftover as well. But it's a solid mass. It's one huge piece of material almost the size of my fist so the worms only have access to that outer surface of it that's exposed to them and to the bin so uh, by doing what I did there cracking it in half we allow for um, that much more surface area so that that'll probably help a lot too and I don't pay that much attention to surface area on my feedings I usually just um, I usually just throw food in pretty much whole. <laughs> Although I've been trying to adopt a new um, habit, it's every time I go into my little bag of kitchen scraps, my collection of kitchen scraps, to throw something new in there, I reach in there and see if some of the pieces that I've already frozen from previous contributions to see if there are hard enough and brittle enough that I might be able to just snap them in half while I'm reaching in there anyway to put in a new piece of kitchen scrap or some new kitchen scraps and um, as a result my collection of kitchen scraps has been a pretty nice assortment of fairly small tiny little pieces of food that most people will tell you is the best way to go about it to give the worms as much surface area access to the um, the entire feeding as possible which is you know why blending the food helps a lot too because then all of that material can almost immediately get infiltrated by bacteria and fungus and everything else and start breaking it down so the worms can access it as well okay Definitely scraps, remainder of the feeding we saw here last time. We, um, we found the bread, we found some banana peel, here's a stem. I've got some asparagus and even some uh, avocado pits, which I'll be curious to see how they progress. Other things, I'm not even sure what they are. <laughs> um, but this stuff will all go right back in here into the feeding zone, keep the... Um, activity focused down the middle here so 
why don't we um why don't we lay in some of this bedding material that we collected in the beginning and threw into the corner it was just some larger um, shreds of paper that we had pulled off the top and you know I'm even thinking that uh, that entire piece of covering newspaper that we had on top I think it's history I don't know if it's worthwhile keeping it around and doing a top cover with it um, you know maybe we can just create a little smaller version of it and you know continue to use it as a top covering but maybe the next time we feed this bin maybe this will just become bedding so for now we'll just continue using it one more time and um, I got a feeling by the next time we see that it's not going to look anything like that anymore <laughs> it's going to totally be uh, done away with now I had uh, had thought about actually placing this final piece of bread um, in here but there's so much of it left over I'm not gonna I'm just gonna hold on to this for another bin feed it elsewhere in the next few days but there's not much left of it so let's go ahead and we're gonna put in the uh, the food that we're gonna give them so this is just a little peek into the bag um, most recently added were some uh, shavings off some white carrots and orange carrots stuff that went into a, a soup I think there's some cauliflower in here as well if you start picking down you'll find all kinds of banana peels and lettuce and everything else so great variety of stuff and you can see the general size of most of the um, particles is not too big so um, not grinding my food or blending it for them but typically they get pretty small chunks of food anyway So I just reached in deep and I grabbed a, a banana peel or two, some potato shavings, here's a grape, and I think there's plenty of worms in this bin so they should be able to handle a second handful like that. So that'll be a nice addition to their feeding zone so we can now bulldoze all of this previously added food right back in here so that they have a, a mix of the already worked food right alongside the freshly added supply of food. Here's some more bedding type stuff, cardboard shreds. I guess I'll chuck them in there too while I'm at it. Let's get their last of these kitchen scraps back into the feeding zone. Maybe a couple more of these hunks of bedding here and there. And scraps of food that we removed. So yeah, I mean for a 20 day old bin, not even three weeks old yet, it seems to me like it's just got so many castings in it already. They're just doing such an awesome job. And you know, naturally this was still just a collection of leaves and cardboard and paper and various things a few weeks ago so considering it's been less than three weeks since the worms have been working this material it really has a, an awesome consistency to it so it's obviously big chunks of leaves and stuff down here as you can see but it's completely intermingled with tons and tons of worms as well as a whole bunch of nice damp worm castings in between the layers so I'm really uh really liking the way things are looking here and I, I attest the great start to the uh, retention of moisture that that plastic bag is bringing to the game so I think that's really awesome now let's um let's not get sidetracked here let's finish off this feeding I'm adding some grit the grit is used by the worms and their gizzards to digest their food and um, the last thing that I usually add is whatever coffee is laying around the house. Oops, and now it looks like it's just laying all over my table here. <laughs> oh well, I'll have a little bit of extra cleanup to do afterwards. So, this is a nice 
feeding for them. I, um, I didn't add any bedding, which I usually add in the beginning as sort of a foundation for the food because we were able to just recycle some of the bedding we encountered in this bin while we were doing our work and we were able to just use that as the foundation to lay down the food. Um, but going forward as the bedding gets depleted or I can't find enough scraps to use that way, I'll just come in here with some cardboard, newspaper leaves, whatever's available, whatever's handy um, to create a nice little bedding cover for this. But since we're so close to the top here, this is a fairly heavily um, loaded bin already. I'm almost at the top surface and it's because I chose the shallower bins here to start these. But um, I might at some point soon, once I've emptied my deep bins that are almost ready for harvesting, I might remove, uh, I might relocate these populations into those deeper bins just so they can continue to get fed and the level of the material in their bin can continue to rise. Okay, so I guess what we're going to have today is a, uh, it's a somewhat mangled piece of newspaper with which we can indicate where we last fed right down here in the middle and originally the newspaper was kind of trying to protect this from getting covered in castings but it doesn't seem to be working so it doesn't matter to me at this point if this thing rests right on the castings we'll just do it this way and um, I got a funny feeling that that paper under here is going to be really far gone the next time we <laughs> check in on here so it's going to continue to uh, catch all the evaporating moisture from that food that we added as they eat it and the moisture gets kicked off it's going to try to evaporate it'll condense and drop back down as a result of that plastic being there and the worms are just going to go crazy for it and they're just going to keep coming up there for a drink going back down for food squirming off to the sides if they prefer to just rest in bedding and get out of the get out of the action there for a while so we got ourselves a really cozy spot developing here for our worms at day 20. So that was feeding number two, and hopefully enjoyed it. Um, that's it for today. Not much to do when you've only got one bin to feed. So thanks for keeping me company. I really appreciate that. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you did, as always, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, show that you liked it, and, um, you know, if you're interested, also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel as well. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.